We're gonna cover the absolute basics of perspective and a few simple rules that will apply to even the most complex perspective challenges. I'm David Finch. I've been a comic book artist for over 25 years. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe and share with your friends. So the first thing that we need to discuss is the horizon line. Simply put, the horizon line is your eye level. I'm gonna go ahead and line this up and put my horizon just about in the center of this picture, just about there. And you can imagine that if you're looking into the picture, your head would be just about here. Your head would be here and your eyes would line up perfectly with that horizon. And if it's helpful, you can also think of a horizon as a camera level. If I just draw a simple shape for a camera, the level of the camera is gonna always be on the horizon. Now it's important to note that you can control your horizon by how high or how low you place your camera. And so I'm gonna put a camera here, directly facing our cube. This is a cube. I'm gonna put a camera above, pointing down at our cube. And I'm gonna put a camera below, pointing up at our cube. And so the horizon for this camera is right here. The horizon for this camera doesn't go like this, it stays at the level of the camera. So the horizon would be here, and the horizon for the camera below would be here. And this one is looking at the cube here, so it would see this front and it would see the top. And this one is pointing here, and so it would see this front and the bottom, whereas this one would just see the front. And so to show that, I'm gonna go ahead and draw those out quickly so you can really see how that looks in action. Again, I'm gonna draw my horizon right down the center for the next one. And as a result, my cube is just gonna be placed right here. I'm looking directly at the front of that cube. And it's not gonna be a perfect cube. <laughs> it's gonna be about as close as I can get just estimating it for this video. There we go, mostly a cube. And so that is our cube looking directly at it with the camera on our horizon line. For this next example, I'm gonna place my camera above my cube. And so I'm gonna put my horizon well above my panel. And so I'm gonna draw my cube again, and I'm gonna have a perspective point going into the distance. And we'll talk about that more later, but for now, I just want to, uh, I just want to show some quick examples of how moving your horizon will affect your view of an object. There's our cube drawn from the top, and so we're seeing the top of the cube, and this is the front. This is the front here. And our camera would really be placed directly above here and pointed downward. And based on how I've drawn that, I've drawn it below my horizon line. Let's fix that. So here's my camera lens right on the horizon and the body of the camera. Imagine that's a camera. There you go. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw another horizon in the center of our picture again. We're close enough to the center, it's a little high. And now we need to talk about vanishing points. The closer things are to us, the larger they appear. And since they get smaller, the farther away they are, we need a mechanism to represent that. That's where vanishing points come in. And so I'm gonna go ahead and draw a vanishing point directly in the center right here. I'm gonna sketch in a road going all the way up to the vanishing point like this. And so let me clean that up just a little bit. And I'm gonna draw a sign. I'm just gonna freehand this. I'm gonna draw a sign just about here. And the top of the sign is actually at eye level. I'm gonna draw a telephone pole just about here. And if I run a line through that pole, I wanna make sure that these all line up. So I'm gonna draw up several of them along this side. I'm gonna draw another pole, and this one can be placed wherever I want. But for the next pole, what I'm gonna do is draw from this point here through the center, and that will de decide for me where my next pole will line up. And it's gonna line up right there. That'll place another pole here. If I start here again, and through, that'll place another pole here. And through, there's another one. Through, there's another one there. I'm gonna draw a line through here that's gonna define my next pole here. 
We'll cover measuring more in detail later on. But for now, what I, all I really want to do is show a very, very simple example of elements in a picture receding to a perspective point in the distance. And for a picture like this, it's very easy to see where my horizon is and where my perspective point is that everything is receding to. But it's very, very rare that you have elements in a picture that recede all the way to a horizon and to a perspective point. And so I'm gonna show you an example by placing my horizon in the picture. I'm gonna place a perspective point here, and I'm gonna to start to use that to place some boxes. I'm just gonna go ahead and sketch those in. So I've got a box here. I'm going to put another one here. Let's just use my ruler to clean this up just a bit. I'm going to put another larger box up here. I'm going to put a box here. This will be behind this one, so it needs to be a little further back. Go ahead and erase my horizon behind that box. I don't want it to interfere. I'm going to place another box here. And I'm just randomly putting these into the picture just to fill out the space. And my final box is going to go here. So in this example, we have the same horizon line and the same point and everything is reacting to that point in the same way, but we can't see our horizon or our perspective point. And you can see them kind of sketched in here. I lightened it down, but they're still visible. But for a picture like this, the horizon and the perspective point are actually obscured by objects in the picture. And this is much more common, but it's important to be able to find that horizon and find that point. And really the easiest way to do that is to take elements in a picture like this angle here and this angle here. And that'll give me a point and where that point rests is where my horizon sits because that perspective point always needs to be on the horizon. This video is brought to you by Comics on Coffee. Comics on Coffee has coffee and comic shops all across the US. It's a great way to support your local comic shop and get some organic, natural processed, direct trade, incredible coffee while you're picking up the latest issue of your favorite comic. They've partnered with indie publishers like Scout Comics and Black Caravan to have custom bags made with their titles on the cover. They also offer a great subscription service, automatic deliveries, easy to make changes, and you can skip or cancel at any time. And you can get a ceramic mug handmade in the US. This one's currently sold out, but they have more coming. There's a link in the description, so head on over to comicsoncoffee.com and use discount code David Finch for 15% off of any order. Buy comics and coffee today. <laughs> you don't even drink coffee. Shush. Now we're going to go ahead and take what we've learned so far and we're going to move our horizon above our scene, looking down at it in this example, and then we'll move our horizon below in this next panel. Actually, we'll do it here so it doesn't conflict in this panel below. And so this will be our horizon for this panel. So I'm going to go ahead and place my perspective point right here. And to make my life easier, I'm going to do this a way that I would be far more likely to actually work. I'm just going to quickly make myself a perspective grid. Drawing out perspective for each individual line as I go is an incredibly difficult way to do perspective. And it's something that I don't see described often enough, the advantage of just drawing out a grid like this, establishing all your perspective and then drawing what you need on top of it. And I try to be as accurate to that point as I can. You can see that I converged here, so it's not perfect. And now I'm going to draw some vertical and horizontal lines. Everything is directly facing us and flat to the camera. So I can place all of my lines horizontally and then vertically because everything is standing directly upright. And so from here, it makes it very easy for me to accurately draw my box shapes in this space. It's much quicker and more efficient for me to draw this way. And I can always go back in here and clean this up just a little bit if I feel the need. And I want you to notice, and this is very, very important, that I'm seeing a large space here going into the panel. But here, this space is very, very narrow. Because things get larger as they come closer, this space also gets larger too. And as it gets further away, it gets much, much smaller until you almost see none of it. And so the closer you get to your perspective point, 
the smaller things get, but also the more narrow they get dimensionally. This can be worked out mathematically. I showed a quick example of that with my telephone poles, but it's very important that you just develop a feel for this because it's something that you'll need to be able to put into practice quickly and easily while you're drawing panels. And so for this next example, I'm gonna draw my point directly in the center again, and now we're gonna be looking up into the panel. And I've actually changed my mind because if I do this, I'm just gonna end up with the opposite of this. And so what I'm gonna do is for this one, I'm gonna lie on the floor, or imagine that I'm lying on the floor, and this would be the floor of my picture, and I'm gonna put my perspective point directly on the floor, so that's the camera right on the floor, looking up into the picture. And let me get my perspective worked in from there. I'm not drawing my lines directly to that point, just because if I do that, I end up with a ball of darkness right there that's really useless to use, and so I always stop just before. I did that a couple of times before I really figured out what a mess I was giving myself to deal with. And it made it really difficult for me to actually even see where my point was. And so I always just stop just before. And so I've got my grid all drawn in from my perspective point that's right here. My horizon is directly at the bottom of my frame. And so if I draw a cube, it's gonna be flat at the bottom and you're gonna see it recede to that perspective point at the top. I'll put a box right in the center here and you'll notice that there's actually no perspective at all that you see, you just see the box because perspective lines go inward toward that point. And because this is so far away and because I'm so close to the point, I get very, very narrow here. Generally speaking, the further you are away from the point, the wider you get, the closer you are to that point, you need to be very, very narrow. Otherwise things start to look very distorted. And if I wanted to draw a box floating in the ceiling, or floating in the air, it'd be very easy for me to go ahead and do that too. And I'll just draw a box that's up in the air. And I'm just using the point, I'm just using the lines that are already previously established. So it makes it nice and neat and simple for me to go ahead and do that. And so that is imagining that we are laying on the floor. This would be our head level here. And we're, we're laying on the floor, looking into the scene. And for this one here, our head is here and we can imagine that we're, we're floating above the scene and we're looking at it from above. And so that's great. We've established a horizon line, we've established a perspective point, and we've drawn some objects receding toward that point. But not every object that we see, as a matter of fact, most objects that we see aren't directly facing us in the way that these boxes are. So we really need more options than just one vanishing point, and that's gonna lead us to two-point perspective. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna draw my horizon line directly in the center of this next panel. It's important to know that not only is there always a horizon line in every picture, but it's one continuous line that really goes to infinity. We don't need to draw infinity, but in this case, I think it'll be helpful for me to draw just outside the panel because I don't want points that are too close together like this because that can start to lead to some major distortions. And we'll cover that, but for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure to put one point outside of the picture and the other point just outside the picture here. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a cube here and I'm gonna do the same thing that I did in the, my past examples. I'm just gonna draw a few guidelines for myself. I find it extraordinarily difficult to just try to line up perspective to one element. And so whenever I do perspective, I always just quickly go ahead and do this. It does not take long to do this and it makes drawing my perspective far easier, much more versatile. I'm not gonna need horizontal lines now because my object isn't lined up. So the front side, if I imagine this is the front here, my front side now is angled away from us and it's getting smaller toward this point. But I will need some vertical lines to work with. And now I can very quickly just sketch in a cube. And I feel like I'm too long on this side. This cube is pretty well even between these two points and so it should really be just about the same size on either side and let me go ahead and clean that up a little bit whenever i get even just a little bit longer i find my lines can start to get a little bit sloppy you can see i've come off here i want to go ahead and draw a cube over here and so i've got these lines going toward this side and this side now is going to be shorter than this side because there's a much greater distance to this point than there is to this point. And so this is receding much faster. And the reverse is true if I draw a cube over here. This is gonna be quite a bit wider than what I get over here because this is 
receding much faster toward this point. And so that's a two point perspective. You can see if I look at a cube in my hand, if I turn it directly toward myself, it's flat. If I turn it, now I need two points because it's getting smaller as it goes away from me here and getting smaller as it goes away from me here. And that's all we have here. And so now I've drawn a horizon line above this panel here, the same way that I did here, but I'm gonna use two perspective points. I'm gonna put one out here and one here. These aren't exactly even, but you can place these however you want. They just need to be far enough apart that you don't end up with distortions. So I've drawn a grid in based on my horizon or eye level being up here, and I've got a point here and a point here, and I'm gonna go ahead and draw in some boxes. And so let's just, Start with a box right about here. I'm gonna draw another box here. I'm gonna draw another one over here. I wanna make sure not to end up with a tangent between these two boxes, so I just brought that line over a little bit. And I wanted to draw this side of the box first. This point is much further away than this one, and so this should be quite a bit shorter. I'm gonna try a tall one here, so you'll only see really the bottom of it. And some of this side here. Draw another one here, and I can just place these large and small all through the scene very, very quickly, and easily, without really having to exert thought. Draw another one here. Another one here. And it's actually very freeing once you have this kind of a setup, seeing just how fast you can populate a whole scene with elements like this as long as they all line up in the same direction. As I get closer to the horizon, I'm getting much shorter on the top of my box. And so now while this works, this one really doesn't work anywhere near as well. And if you're looking at this thinking, something doesn't quite add up and it doesn't quite look right, that's absolutely true. I said earlier on in the video that as things get closer to us, they get larger and as they move away, they get smaller. And because we're all the way up here, this is our eye level, as things get further from us this way, they should also be getting smaller because this is much closer to our horizon than this down here. And so I really need to start thinking about three point perspective. And so we're gonna cover that right here. I'm gonna draw basically the same thing. I've got my horizon just about that high off of my panel. I'm gonna just draw right through my previous panel. I'm gonna put a point just about here, right where it was in the previous panel, and another point here. So that will all be the same. And so my eye level is here, but I'm looking down into the panel. And so I'm gonna imagine that I'm basically standing at about the center of the panel, and this is my head here. And let me just erase some of what's in the way on this previous panel here. Just make this a little bit more clear. So this would be my eye level here. And because this is where I'm standing, things will get smaller directly away from me. And so I can line up my third point directly downward from where I'm imagining I'm looking into this panel all the way, and I'm gonna put it here. Now, I could decide that I'm standing over here, and then my third point would be here. And so let's go ahead and draw in my grid and get all of this established. I wanna point out I'm not measuring these lines. So the distance between these lines is really just eyeballed, and I'm not worrying about it being accurate at all. It's not important for what I'm doing. You can actually get much more precise with perspective if you want. You can make sure that all of these line up perfectly and it can give you the opportunity to draw a particular size and then use your grid to make that smaller in a really accurate way. But it also is a massive time commitment that can start to pay really only marginal uh, benefits. And so I've got my grid drawn in and you can already see that it looks much more accurate than what I had up here. So let me just lighten this down. And I'll go ahead and draw a similar thing to what I had in the first panel. I've got a block here. And now I'm actually receding away from my horizon, which is up here, down toward my third point. And already you have something that is much more accurate looking because it's closest to us here and receding further away from us this way, this way, and this way. I 
I think that's enough to really get the point across. You can see that this is far more accurate looking than what I had here. And that's all through the use of a third perspective point. So a good rule of thumb to bear in mind is that a two point perspective will work very well if your horizon is along the center of your objects. But if your horizon is above or below your objects, you really want to have a third point so your objects can recede downward from your horizon as well as laterally side to side. And before I discuss anything else, I really want to point out that the same rule applies for this panel as well. Because I've got my horizon well above my scene, these shapes really should be going down to a third point and you would get something a little bit more similar to this. For this panel here, because I've got my horizon at the bottom of the picture, it's actually really in the frame. Strictly speaking, I can get away with this and make these completely vertical. But I could also, because this is so low in the scene, establish a third point and have those recede to a third point. Now, before we wrap this up, I want to talk about some very common errors that I see in perspective. And so I'm going to draw a horizon line. I'm going to go ahead and draw two points on my horizon. I'm going to draw one here and one here. And we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to work out again another little grid for myself. It just makes everything so much easier. So I've gone ahead and quickly established a grid here and I'm going to draw a cube and I'm going to put my cube basically in the center of the picture. This is in a two point perspective. And so here's the top of my, this isn't really a cube. And you can see I didn't actually have a line here, but it's close enough to an existing line that I can basically infer it pretty well. And so this one's going to be just about here. And this is a very common problem. I'm getting a lot of distortion once I get to this corner here, and that's because my points are just way too close together. And so the solution to this is to just bring your points out much further, and it'll give you a much softer angle. And so you'll avoid this kind of obvious distortion. I'm gonna go back to this page here and use this panel to show you an example of another problem that very commonly happened. And I'm gonna go ahead and just establish my verticals right away. And I'm gonna establish my horizon, put it just about here. Will extend across and I'm going to put one perspective point here and work out my perspective from here. And so I'm going to draw a side of my cube right here, just like this. And now for my other side of my cube, I need to decide where my other perspective point is going to be. And because we've been doing this, you all know that it's going to be right along my horizon line. So here would be a good spot for it, or maybe just a little bit further to give me a little bit more of a soft angle. So right about there, I think would be a good point for me to finish my cube and everything would work out properly. But if you're not properly aware of the horizon, or even if you are, but you lose track of what you're doing, it's very easy to just start placing this in an odd spot. And so I'm going to put it here and it's not on my horizon. It's so important to remember that all of your perspective points, unless something is tilted in your picture, and we will cover that in the next video, everything needs to line up on your horizon. And so I'm going to go ahead and draw the other side of my cube from this point. And again, it's not anything like a perfect cube. But, and the point is that I'm drawing to one point that I placed off of the horizon, which really distorts the form. This is a much more common occurrence than you would really think. And just being constantly aware of the fact that your horizon is a continuous line, and unless something is tilted, all of your points need to be on that horizon line. This next example is by far the most common problem that I see with perspective. And so I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw a block I'm going to draw the side of the block that's receding toward my horizon. And what I've drawn is something that looks obviously very, very distorted. Now, this would be fine if I was drawing a rectangle that from the side was like this. But if I'm imagining that I'm drawing something that from the side is more like this, this is going way too far toward my perspective point. And to really illustrate that, this is actually a Rubik's cube, so it's, it's a perfect cube. And you can see as I turn it, my perspective point is very, very close, just about here, it's or here even. And if I bring it closer, you almost cannot even see the side of that cube. And so as I bring it further out and my perspective point gets further, and I'm kind of estimating this, you can see that it's still substantially shorter here than it is here, and I've got a point that I'm kind of imagining would be all the way just about here. Now I'm guessing this, but it looks about right to me. And so you can see how easy it is to end up with distortion just by drawing this side way too deep. Because this point is so close, 
I would see very, very little of that side. And so we're gonna go ahead and just fix that. Actually, what I'll do is I'll draw the same cube just on the other side and we'll do it properly. I'm gonna make my cube a little shorter so it stays in the panel here. So again, it's not a cube. It's an approximation of a cube. All right, and so because I'm so close to that point, I'm gonna draw toward it, but I wanna be very, very narrow. And you can see right away that looks far, far more accurate. And it looks like this side is about the same size as that side, as opposed to this side being miles and miles long versus this side. It's also a common problem with things like tabletops. So if I've got a table here, I've got it basically in perspective here, and it looks just about right. I'm far enough away from that point. But if I was to do that again, I'm gonna shift it over just a little bit here and make the top as wide. It's actually not quite as wide as I did down here, it looks distorted. And really the quick, easy solution for that, because it's so close to that point, is to make that very, very short along the top there. And that looks far more accurate off in the distance. All right, that's gonna do it for this one. In the next video, we'll cover some more complex topics, including circles in perspective, some more accurate measuring techniques, placing objects that are tilted in a scene, and drawing with a tilted horizon in a panel, which is effectively just tilting our camera. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video and be sure to tune in every Monday night at eight o'clock Eastern for Monday Night Draw with Meredith and Dave.